Sige, go. So, good morning, everyone. We are going to report about the accessibility for the final plate, which is a propo proposed north, north bus terminal. So, our group members are De La Pena, D, Lou, Mercado, and Po. Next slide, please. So, our scope of topics includes the universal design, bus terminal functional arrangement, and circulation flow, or the wayfinding, accessibility guidelines for the bus terminal and the PB344, which is the accessibility law applicable for bus terminal. This includes the walkway dimensions, ramp dimensions, tactile blocks, and the public toilets for PWD. Next slide, please. So first is the universal design. Next slide. So the concept of universal design is about a new quality relationship between a diversity of users and human-made physical environments or objects. It emphasizes a creative and inclusive approach to make the mainstream built envir environment more sustainable and better for everyone. It un understands and responds to the needs of diverse users without stigma or limitations. This includes people who have impaired visions and or, or hearing, are from different cultures with different values and customs, have language and or, or speech impairments resulting in difficulties with writing and comprehension, have physical limitations, and are of different ages. Next slide. So next is the seven principles of universal design. First is the equitable use. So the design is useful and marketable to people with diverse abilities. We must make uh, provisions for privacy, security, and saf safety equally available for all users. In other words, we must make the design friendly to all users. An example for this is the integrated, dispersed, and adaptable seating, assemb seating in assembly areas. Next is the flexibility in use. The design accommodates wide range of individual preferences and abilities. So the design must provide adaptability to the user's space. space. An example for this is the automate, automated teller machine with visual, tactile, and audible feedback, tapered card opening, and palm test. So the third and the third principle of design is simple and intuitive use, use of design that's easy to understood. This design must eliminate unnecessary complexity. Uh, and for the fourth principle is the perceptible information. So the design that communicates necessary information effectively to the user. The design must provide compatibility with a variety of techniques or devices used by people with sensor, sensory limitations. An example is a redundant queuing, the communication and signages, and tactile blocks. Next slide, please. So for the fifth one, the tolerance for errors. The, the design minimizes hazards and adverse consequences of accidental or unintended action. So the design must arrange elements to minimize hazards and errors. Like hazardous elements must be eliminated, isolated, or shielded. Another thing is also to provide warnings of hazards and errors. So for the sixth is the phys low physical effort. The design can be used efficiently and comfortably with a minimum of fatigue. This allows users to maintain a neutral body position and minimize sustained physical effort. An example is a lever or loophole handles on doors and faucets. And lastly is the size and space for approach and use. Appropriate size and space is provided for approach, reach, manipulation, and use, regardless of the user's body size, posture, and mobility. This must provide a clear line of sight to important elements. An example is the white gate at the terminal that can accommodate all users. So there are also some other examples of universal design places or products. This includes the ramp entrance, automatic doors, lever door handles, flat panel light switches, and the fast lighting. So next slide, please. 
So NAP is the post terminal functional arrangement and circulation flow or the wind binding. So this is the diagram for the functional arrangement of bus terminal. So the diagram shows how numerous terminal functions are arranged based on their operational relationship, which defines the circulation design and the site layout of the bus terminal. It can be seen that there are separate entry and exit points are provided for bus, passengers, and terminal staff to ensure a conflict-free circulation. You can, as you can see, there's the entry one for the bus entry and the entry two for passengers, terminal staff, and staff or visitors. There is also a separate arrival and departure terminals for buses, like the entry one is for the bus entry, and then there's another another route for the exit exits for the buses. Next is uh, the diagram illustrates of how the terminal functions are interconnected with one another. Um, the passenger and the bus functions are systematically coordinated with, with each other by showing how the buses from their entry points tra transition to the offloading and then to the loading base and then which is then connected to the exit for the buses. Uh, next is that there is the loading base which are accessible to the passengers coming from the from the feeder service or the public spaces. The, these public spaces includes the, the toilets, the canteen, the drinking water, ticketing, etc. And for the departure bay, the departure bay, which is uh, coming out uh, like for the departure bay, there is the loading base, which is then connected from the public spaces. And then for the st terminal staff, they have their own circulation route that share the same entry and exit points with the passengers. So the terminal staff from the diagram are provided with their own private parking spaces prior to access assessing their different offices and other staff related spaces and functions. Next slide, please. So next is the accessibility guidelines for bus terminals. Next slide. So the, as you can see, there's the space allowances for, and the left part of the table is the identification and the right part is the description of standards. So for the wheelchair, the minimum unobstructed floor or ground floor area has a length of 1,200 millimeter and a width of 900 millimeter, a minimum turning radius of 500 to 2,000 millimeters. However, 2,000 millimeter is the ideal turning radius. So next is the vision zone. So the vision zone height must be between 900 mm to 1,800 mm, and the smallest letter should not be less than 15 mm. For the crotch users, they the preferable opening width is 920 mm, and for the handrails with braille, which is for the visually impaired, it must be slip resistant with round edge ed, ends, have a circular se section of 38 to 45 mm in diameter, minimum clear space of 50 from the walls, be free of any sharp or abrasive abrasive elements. So next is the white cane, white cane users for the visually impaired. So a bar, a barrier or sound emitting object to warn the visually impaired should be provided under stairs or escalator. Uh, a ra radial range of the white cane is a, a band 1,200 and 200 m wide. The white cane cannot, if the white cane cannot be Tag objects above 600 mm. There are project projections above this height. Then visually impaired users should be worn with via text textural changes. So next is the grab bars. Be slip slip resistant with round ends. Preferably have nardal surfaces. Have a circular sec section of 34 to 45 mm and be free of any sharp 
or abrasive materials and must have a minimum clear space of 50 from the wall, 50 mm from the wall, and installation height 750 mm to 900 mm. Next slide. So for bus terminal exteriors, uh, yes, sir. Hi, yes. Uh, so we got a good 15 minutes, so mag, uh, 15, 15 minutes, mo no? Sa tanan. Uh, 15 minutes per person, sir. Uh, 10 to 15 more per person, or um, just wanted to ask if you were on, um, I forgot to ask at the start, na mag straight straight ba mo, or is it just like one person for like the whole thing, something like that? Uh, we divided our answer, our report according to like one person will discuss this part of the report. Ah, okay, okay. Sige. So, um, I'll just like raise my hand if you have like uh, two minutes left or like one minute. I'll just say uh, two minutes left at the end of your presentation para ma mapas pa siya gamay. Uh, clarification, no, sir. Is 15 minutes for the whole group or for the per person? Uh, the per person. So ah, okay. uh, the way, the rate we're going, that took like 15 minutes. So maybe maybe I really have to make this kind of 10 just to make it a bit faster because the pace is a bit too slow for me. So I'll raise my hand when you have two minutes left <laughs> in your presentation, okay? So yeah, uh, just like pick up the pace a bit. Okay, uh, whoever is presenting now, see Venice. Venice. Oh, that's me now, sir. No, it's Christine. Okay. Uh, so you go ahead. I'll raise my hand when you have two minutes left. Okay. So, uh, may I ask, sir? Um, I, I will report another part after this, but it's kind of um, uh, like more separated lang from this part. Sir. Okay. 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 okay, okay but so each person, uh, let's make it each person has 10 minutes because the 15 minutes like, took a bit too long for me. So again. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, Okay, so for the bus terminal exterior, since it's all there, we will just cover the main points. So for passenger alighting and drop-off points, it should be beside and parallel to vehicle pull-up spaces at 1.5 meters width by 6 meters length at minimum. And um, for the, for the it should be also given tactile floor guidance to be provided from the building, building drop-off area leading up to the entrance of the building. For the wayfinding, um, transit station maps should be provided at numerous locations throughout the stations. For the entrance, um, it should be visible and it should have a minimum level landing of dimension at, of 1.8 meters by 1.8 meters. Its clear width should be a minimum of 900 mm, um, but preferably it should be 1 meters. One meter. I mean, um, ideally, it should also be provided with braille, beepers, and tactile guidance for the visually impaired. So floors should be flat as much as possible, but if it's sloped, the slope should be no greater than one is to twenty, and it should be made of non-skid material. Um, it can also be provided with brightly colored tape for people with low vision. For taxi stands, the minimum width behind the taxi stand should be one point two meters, and the boarding area should have a minimum clear space of 900 mm with, and it should also have an accessible route provided. Uh, so next slide, please. <laughs> For walkways, the standard minimum walkway width is 1.8 meters. You can also provide guide rails along it for PWD, especially for outside um, exterior walkways. And if they are longer than 60 meters, resting areas or branches should be provided, and they are usually at 30 meter intervals. For car parking, the accessible parking should, if possible, be sheltered. The parking slot minimum dimension should be 5 meters by 3.6 meters. And side transfer bays of 1.2 meter width should be provided. Um, these transfer bays can be shared by two parking slots. So my groupmate Patrick Lee will discuss about transit stops and the topics after it. So for transit stops and shelters, transit stops must be located near building entrances and must have a sheltered waiting area. And shelters and benches must be oriented towards the public and oncoming transit vehicles for people to have a higher degree of visibility in the transit stop. And then the typical dimensions for the shelter is 1.28 meters wide by 2.4 meters in length and 
3.525 meters in i uh, 2.4 meters in height and 3.25 meters in length and then transit shutter opening with should be at a minimum of 800 mm and the recommended curb height at the transit stop is 150 mm so the transit stop waiting pad should have a clear minimum dimension of 2.10 meters by 1.8 1.98 meters and this is to allow wheelchair deployment and passageway within the transit stop and then the paved connection from waiting pad to the sidewalk should have a minimum width of 1.5 meters and street furniture clearance spaces should be 1.5 meters for passage space and 2.2 meters minimum for headroom space for pedestrians and if pedestrian sidewalk width is less than two meters no benches or any other seating areas should be placed and the next would be seating design so I'll be discussing the ideal seating dimensions. So seats should be 450 mm to 550 mm high from the finished grade line. And it should be at a uniform height. And then armrests must be 180 mm to 250 mm from the seat height. And the seat depth should be within the range of 400 mm to 500 mm. Next slide, please. So this is these are accessibility guidelines for bus terminal interiors. So first is about reservation ticket and information counters so the front of the counter should have clear floor space of at least 900 mm by 1200 mm and at least one low counter at a height of 750 mm to 800 mm from the floor with the clear knee space of 750 mm high by 900 mm mm wide by 400 mm deep must be provided also and at least one of the counters should have an induction loop unit which with a visible signage for people with hearing impairments and the counters with pictographic maps tactile or braille must be provided for the visually impaired and next is about ticket gates so the ticket gate should have a minimum width of 900 mm to accommodate wheelchair users and a continuous line of guiding blocks for people with visual impairment should be provided within this within these ticket gates also and Passenger alighting and boarding point at level of approach for PWT passengers must also be provided. And the next is seating spaces. So a minimum clear and floor space of 900 mm by 1200 mm for wheelchair us users should be provided. And then counter tops should have a height between 650 mm to 800 mm and its minimum clear knee space is 600 mm high. And then the minimum depth of the counter is 480 mm. And then for public telephone, uh, at least one accessible payphone must be provided within the bus terminal. And then its minimum opening width, opening width is 8900 mm. And then if the telephone booth is enclosed, it should be dimensioned at a minimum of 900 mm by 1200 mm. And then fixed seats must be avoided within these telephone booths since it's mostly standing. And then the operable operable parts within the telephone booth should be between 800 mm to 1200 mm high and then lastly atm money machine so a 1200 mm by 1200 mm clear floor space must be provided for each person within these atm machines okay so i'm going to discuss about the bp344 accessibility law so first is the walkway dimensions. Next slide, please. So for the parking, there should be enough space for people with disabilities to pass through. So when they're using their crutches or wheelchairs. And parallel parking is discouraged unless it is placed away from the flow of traffic. Because again, they need space for them to um, get out of the car and go in, into the car and for their wheelchairs to pass through. So if um, you have parallel parkings, it must be placed away from the flow to avoid, um, uh, for safety reasons rather. So now let's look at the illustration. So the minimum width of a parking slot is 3.7 meters and a length of 5 meters. So there should be a walkway with a minimum clear width of 1.2 meters. And along this walkway, there should be a drop sidewalk and a curb gap. So next slide, please. For the drop sidewalks, there, uh, it should be provided at pedestrian crossings and at the end of walkways of a private street or access road. So now let's look at the illustration. The drop sidewalks at crossings shall have a width, um, the same with the width of the crossing. 
So they should be sloped towards the road with a maximum gradient of 1 to 100, 1 to 100 to prevent collecting rainwater. Lastly, the dropped sidewalk must be elevated from the road or gutter not exceeding 19 mm. So next slide, please. So for the sidewalks and walkways, it should be or slip resistant material should be used and have a coefficient of friction of 0 0.6 for level surfaces and 0 0.8 for sloping surfaces. Walkways should be level in gradient all throughout its length and this gradient should not be steeper than 1.2 meters and have a maximum cross gradient of 1 to 100 and a minimum width of 1.2 meters. So for the walkway headroom, it should not be less than two meters. So this includes um, trees or vegetation or maybe overhead um, roof or something like that. Okay, so next page, please. So for the visually impaired, uh, this is especially for the visually impaired, walkways should follow straightforward routes with right angle turns. And they must also contain directional tactile blocks, which will be talked about later. So as seen on the two pictures on the right, for open spaces, edges should be defined by the use of planters in dwarf, sorry, in dwarf walls. So this vegetation should also be regularly trimmed to ensure safety when uh, people are walking along the walkways and to maximize the walkway width. So street furniture should also not, uh, like, it's not advised to put street furniture along the walkways as these obstruct the walkways. Okay, so next slide, please. For the corridors, there should be a minimum clear width of 1.2 meters to allow for both a wheelchair user and a non-PWD to pass. However, if uh, for, for two wheelchairs to be able to pass, the minimum width shall be 1.8 meters. Now let's look at the illustration for the turnabout spaces. It should be provided for wheelchairs to turn around, and these spaces shall have a minimum dimension of 1.5 meters by 1.5 meters, and shall be spaced at a maximum of 12 meters. So turnabout spaces should also be provided at, at a width of 3.5 meters of every dead end corridor. So that is all for the walkway dimensions, and moving on to the next category. So the next category is about ramp dimensions. So the first topic under this is ramps at curb cutouts. So curb cutouts should not obstruct any walkway or reduce its width. And its minimum width is 0.90 meters as seen in the illustration here on the right. And then same similar to our accessible ramp, its maximum gradient ratio should be 1 is to 12. So next is about ramps at building entrances. So a minimum of one entrance ramp to the building should be accessible to persons with disabilities from the arrival and departure points to the interior lobbies. And then if entrances do not have the same floor level as the site arrival grade, ramps, accessible ramps must be provided to access the entrance levels. And then entrances with vestibules should have 1.8 meter depth or a landing, a landing to the ramp and a 1.5 meter width level area. Next slide, please. So next is about accessible ramps. So the minimum clear width of an accessible ramp is 1.2 meters, and then its maximum gradient ratio is 1 is to 12. And then the maximum run of a ramp is 6 meters if the gradient is 1 is to 12. And longer ramps with a 1 is to 12 gradient should have a minimum landing area of 1.5 meters. And then a level area with a minimum of 1.8 meters should be provided at the top and bottom parts of the ramp. So at the start and end points, there should be a 1.8 meter level area. And then ramps are equipped with curbs on both sides with a minimum height of 0.10 meters, as seen in the image on the top, top right. And then next slide, please. So accessible ramps must be, uh, accessible ramps with more than three meters in width must have intermediate handrails at the center. And then the recommended type of handrail for ramps having more than three meters in width is the double J type handrails. And then handrails on both sides of the ramp are installed at either 0.70 meters to 0.90 meters from the floor of the ramp. And then if a ramp with a rise greater than 0.20 meters leads down to an area where there is a vehicular traffic, um, it, 
It should be provided with a railing across the full width of its lower end that is not less than 1.80 meters from the foot of the ramp. So there should be a 1.80 meters uh, space and then a railing to prevent the person in the wheelchair to go to the road or to the public areas. Uh, next slide, please. So this is this is about bus stop ramps and bus ramp dimensions. So usually bu buses at the entrance door, they usually have a manually operated sunken type ramp over ramp is sunken type wrap over ramp is provided for PWD wheelchair users. And then the minimum width of this bus ramp is usually 800 mm and it is coated with an anti-slip coating. And then the load carrying capacity of the bus ramp is 300 kilograms and then a minimum bus stop ramp area is approximately 749 mm by one meter and this is the minimum and then a clearance clearance space for the bus stop ramp is approximately 1 1980 mm by 2134 mm and then if buses don't really have like a ramp uh, a standing platform can be provided as seen in the image here for the wheelchair users to access the ramp. So next slide, please. And these are some bus ramp details. So on the left side, you can see a bus ramp detail of like the, the one that is provided within the bus. So there's a section and a plan view. And then to the right is a bus stop ramp detail, usually the ones you see within curb cutouts. So this is how it looks like. So the most common means of guidance for the visually impaired is with the use of tactile blocks or pavers. So these are textured ground surfaces used to alert the visually impaired users. So there are two types. So on the left being indicated is the correct path or uh, it indicates the correct path or route to follow for someone with um, visual impairments. And they're usually installed at one or two rows. But as you can see it here, it's installed at one row. They should not, and they should also not be obstructed. So the one on the right, you know, is the tactile warning blocks or the dot types. So these indicate an approaching potential hazard or a change in the direction of the walkway. So they're meant to act as a warning and usually they're installed as two rows. And they should have a grade tone that contrasts by 50% from the surrounding floor finishes. But basically mostly it's usually bright yellow. So it can also be used to guide people with low vision. So next slide, please. So um, for tactile guiding blocks or the line types, you usually install this at a path from the building drop-off area leading up to the entrance of the building. And then along, at the, along the entire length of a planned accessible route throughout the entire building and also at emergency routes. So for tactile warning blocks, meanwhile, you install this basically at end, before any obstructions or potential hazards, but also mainly uh, across the width of an accessible pathway at its entry and exit points. You um, install this in a single row at stairways and ramps. You should, it's placed 300 mm at the beginning and end. And for ramps, it's um, placed at the start and end of each run. It's also placed at building entrances on both sides of it. Um, at bus boarding or drop off curbs. And in the absence of suitable protective barriers, you install this where there are overhead obstructions that are over 0 0.6 meters and less than two meters above floor level. And you also install this at areas where pedestrian and vehicle traffic intersect. So next slide, please. So these are common arrangements of these tactile pavers. So as you can see on the left, these are how um, it would look like if you install this on pathways or such. So usually, as you can see, usually the warning blocks are at two rows and then the guiding blocks are usually just one row and just to indicate a pathway. On the right are the details of these tactile blocks. So usually these blocks are 300 mm um, by width and length usually they're just squares so um, next slide please uh, these are again sample applications of such tactile blocks so this is how it would look like if there are obstructions with like trees and where there are manholes and stuff um, next slide please 
And this is how it would look like applied to a bus stop layout. So there are tactile blocks at ramp ends and exit of start and exit and along the entire length of the boarding part. Uh, next slide, please, again. Uh, so additional info long, um, for if there are road crossings, um, you put color tactile marking strips that are at least 600 mm width and they uh, at the beginning and end of a traffic island. So this is to ensure that the visually impaired persons are guided. So the images will show how these are installed. So they're also placed at the slope of the curb ramp so to, ensure, to guide the visually impaired. So next slide, please. So now let's proceed to the public toilets for PWDs. So the basic um, idea for this is the grab bars and the accessibility for the wheelchairs. So in order for the uh, user to have an easy passage for his or her wheelchair, um, there shall be a, a minimum of 1.7 meters by 1.8 meters of the room itself. Then there shall have uh, it shall have a minimum of one flip up grab bar to be mounted on the side of the compartment adjacent to the water closet, and this shall be at a height between 280 millimeters and 300 millimeters from the top of the water closet seat, and it it shall not extend more than 100 millimeter from the tip of the water closet seat. Next, there shall have a one, at least one vertical bar on the side wall. So this is the, uh, you can find here the vertical bar. So it shall be 350 mm to 400 mm from the front edge. And center line of the water closet shall be 750 mm from the finish wall to the grab bar. And uh, the turning space for the wheelchair users shall have uh, at least 2.25 square meters with minimum of 1.5 diameter for the wheelchair movement. So we have here the blow-up plan for the PWD toilet. So uh, other than the dimension, important dimensions, the PWD toilet shall have accessories such as mirrors, it shall have paper dispensers, towel rocks, and fittings for faucets mounted at a reachable height by wheelchair users. And accessories shall be placed near accessible basin. So other dimensions, we have the toilet seat. So the maximum toilet height, um, toilet seat height shall be 450 millimeter. And for the lavatory, it shall have a 460 uh, millimeter on center minimum from the adjacent wall and it shall be 800 millimeter, millimeter at a maximum height from the floor finish line and a minimum of 650 millimeter clear leg room space. So here, as you can see on the left side, we have an example image for the accessible toilet uh, in Japan. So we have here the grab bar and we have here a this is uh, specifically a flip-up grab bar, and this is specifically an L-type uh, grab bar. So it shows here the horizontal grab bar and connecting to the vertical grab bar. So here, uh, it show the sec uh, the perspective here shows a uh, detail regarding what is the di uh, diameter for these grab bars. So it shall have a 38 millimeter to 45 uh, millimeter diameter for these grab bars for easy access and um, grip. So we have here, another is the for urinals and lavatories. So for urinals, urinals shall have a wall hung type and uh, it should have an elongated lip. Other, dim uh, other dimensions, so the urinal height shall be at a maximum of 480 millimeter. So from the urinal lip, to the floor finish air, uh, floor finish line. The minimum clear floor space for this area shall be uh, 750 wide, so wing to wing from the this privacy shield and by 1,200 uh, millimeter between grab bar and the wall. So the privacy shields, as I uh, I've mentioned a while ago, it shall be 750 millimeter uh, clear width and for this grab bar it shall have a clear width of 650 millimeter so here as you can see on the right side it's the lavatory where it showed a minimum of uh, 500 millimeter in width 
700 millimeter clear um, foot space and 800 millimeter uh, maximum from the floor finish up until the uh, finish of the lavatory uh, surface. So this is again another uh, detail. This is the section part or the side elevation part of the urinal and this is show, showing the front elevation of the urinal. So just additional design consideration for the PWD toilets, we have uh, toilet doors shall be designed to open outwards so that it would be easier for a rescuer to enter a toilet cubicle if a person has fallen and is lying behind the door. So the use of sliding or fold doors should also be considered. So it does not only um, limit to these kind of swing doors, but also you could also use the sliding doors and folding doors. Toilet compartment doors shall have a horizontal pull bar fixed at a height of 900 mm. So this could be, uh, this is to provide a easier grip for the wheelchair users. Next is an emergency button shall be provided at a height of 400 millimeter to 600 millimeter from the floor finish line. And these are our reference. Thank you for listening. Okay, good. So uh, let me see, stop timing here. I've been timing everyone. Um, just a quick check. So Poe uh, po presented for a good a total of six minutes. D had eight minutes. Mercado had 15 minutes. De La Pena had six minutes. And Lou, uh, four minutes. So this won't impact your grade, just like a, an uncatch up on to how many minutes you actually uh, were discussing. Um, very good presentation, especially like the part about the tactile uh, um, blocks. Is it tactile blocks? <laughs> and then um, some additional information for everyone. Let me just share my screen. The first group gets a pass because they're the first group usually. Uh, I won't be so hard on my grading. Um, for universal design, we also have this book, um, the graphic standards. If you want a copy, uh, I can just send you a copy. I think it's also on our Facebook group. But I'll put it there again anyway for those who don't have it. And there's a section there on universal design. And they have like updated drawings. This is published, uh, let me check the year, 2017. So not that bad, not that old. And then you can see the drawings are still here. For, uh, don't forget your anthropometrics. And uh, just the beginning part could have used a lot more drawings because like we're trying to design. And then um, the, the going to the end of the presentation is already very good, especially with like uh, the use of more illustrations. So over here, basically what they said, but with like um, more drawings, and they're using inches instead of uh, mm or metric. So you can use this book. Uh, let me know if you need it. I'll put it up on our um, Facebook group anyway. Okay. Some other notes. Uh, let's hear. Let's stop recording for a minute. 